Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your 23rd AngularJS tutorial and in this video we're going to carry on our discussion with form validation. Part 2. Wow. Okay then dudes, so in the last tutorial what we did was use those classes that AngularJS provided us with to offer some kind of feedback to a user when they don't enter data into a form correctly. For example, if we touch this name field and then move away without filling anything in, it's going to go red around the borders. And that's our way of saying, look, this is required. But as soon as we enter something in that's fine, it goes back to normal. Likewise with the email, if we move out of it now after we've touched it and there's nothing there, it's red. And if we write an email that's not valid, it's still red. But as soon as we do something that is valid, it goes back to normal. Okay, that's crazy spelling but you get the point so i want to take this one step further this time and offer the user some more useful feedback such as a sentence that says you must enter a name or a valid email etc and to do that we're going to make use of some of the properties that angular provides us with on this contact form object okay so for pretty much every class that it gives us like we used in the last tutorial things like ng invalid or ng touched we have a corresponding property, which is a Boolean true or false. So here's some of the properties that Angular provides us with. So we have these classes, right? ng pristine, ng dirty, touched, valid, and invalid. And these are the corresponding properties. So when a field has this class, ng pristine, and it's not been touched, then this property on that field is going to be true. When the class goes and it's been replaced by ng dirty, this is going to be false. Likewise, when pristine is true, dirty will be false. When pristine is false, dirty will be true, right? They're always opposite to each other, those two. Same with touched and untouched, um, valid and invalid. So they're all Booleans that basically tell us whether a certain field has been touched, whether it's dirty, pristine, whether it's valid, etc. And we can use those to kind of dynamically output all the data, which is what we're going to do now. All right then, so just a quick demonstration first of all. I'm just going to output some of these properties to the browser so you can see them as we interact with the form. So under the first input, I'm going to do a quick span tag. And then down here, I'm going to write the variable names first of all, something like that, pristine. And I'm not referencing that variable. This is just outputting text to the browser at the minute. But within an expression, I'm going to output the value of that variable. And remember, these variables are all stored on the um, form object and the input object, right? So we have to reference this first of all, and this is just regular JavaScript. I'm just grabbing that contact form object like we can do. And then dots name, because that's the field that we want. And then after that, we do the property that we want to output, which is pristine, okay? So that's the pristine one. I'm gonna output the opposite one, which is dirty down here. I'll just change this to dirty and this to dirty. And in fact, what I'm going to do now is just copy and paste this a few times. I'm going to do it four more times because we're going to output four more things. Now, the next one I want to output is untouched. And I'll output the property name there. And then obviously the opposite one, which is touched and touched. And then finally, we're going to have invalid, invalid. And then we're going to have valid on the end and then valid right here like that. OK, so I've saved that now and we can see when we refresh and we first load up the form, it's pristine. This is true. This property right here. Dirty is false because we've not entered anything yet. So these are opposite. OK, untouched is true. That's right. And touched is false. So again, opposite. Invalid is true because we've not entered anything yet. It's not valid and valid is false. So the opposites, right? But as soon as we enter something like Ryu, then watch these change. So pristine becomes false because now I've entered something into it. Dirt is true. So they're opposite again. Untouched is false because it has been touched. Touched is true. So opposites again. And invalid is false and valid is true. Again, opposites, but they've all switched now, okay? So we can use these properties now to output data dynamically, which is what we're going to do. So let's get rid of those. I'm going to keep that span tag. In fact, I'll make this a div like so. 
and then what I'm going to do is use the directive called ng show. Now we've seen that in a few tutorials back uh, where we can basically uh, check the value of a boolean and if this is true then we're going to show it, if it's false then we won't show it, okay? So we'll say ng show only show this element if something is true and the things that I want to be true are if it's touched, so we'll say contact form dot name dot touched. So if that's true, if we've gone ahead and touched one of these and right, we want two conditions to be true, we also want it to be invalid. Okay, so if it's been touched and it's still invalid, then we'll show this element where we're going to offer feedback saying, hey, you need to enter something that is valid. Okay, so touched and contact form dot name dot invalid like that so we're going to show this then then i'm going to do a small tag just going to give this some styles to make it red so i'll say color red i'll display it as block and then i'll also do text align center and the feedback message is going to be enter a valid name okay so now let's give this a whirl so by false, it's not going to show. And that's because these two properties, touched and invalid, well, this is true, but this is false. It's not been uh, touched yet, okay? So this is only going to show when both of these are true. So as soon as it's been touched and then we move away, now we get that feedback message, enter a valid name. As soon as we type it in, it goes away. Pretty cool, right? So we can do the same thing for the email going to copy that and I'm going to paste it right under here this time we change name to email and we change it there as well and we're going to change this to email okay save that and then when we refresh if we come to the email and we type something that's not valid like this move away now we get that feedback message same with the name if we move away we get the feedback uh, feedback message okay so I want to show you one more thing and that is how we can kind of disable this if the form is not valid because we don't want people clicking if they've got invalid fields, do we? So the way we do that is by coming here and we're going to use ng-disabled and this works in a similar way to ng-show. We're going to say we want this button to be disabled if this form is not valid, okay? So we'll just get this contact form again and then we're going to use the dot invalid property. So when this form is invalid, okay, then this is going to be disabled. So currently it's invalid and I can't right click it now because it's disabled. But if we right click somewhere else and inspect the element, then I'll show you what this does to the element itself. You can see down here, input, and you can see disabled equals disabled. That's because this form is not yet valid, okay? So now what we can do is attach a style to this. So we're gonna use a CSS selector right down here at the bottom, and I'm gonna say input, and I'm gonna use one of these attribute selectors, and it's gonna be disabled equals disabled. And then what I'll do is set its opacity to 0.4, just to make it fade out a little bit. And then I'm also gonna change the cursor, and the cursor is going to be, oops, if I can spell it right, C-U-R-S-O-R, -R, there we go. And the cursor is going to be not allowed, like that. And we're gonna set this to important, like that. Okay, so if I save this now, when we hover over this, it's gonna get that little cursor right there to say we can't click this. But if we go ahead and fill this in and everything becomes valid, uh, just make up an email address, and blah de, blah blah now we can send okay if we delete one of these now we can't send blah de, blah okay so that is what we can do with these different properties they're really flexible and we can kind of give the user feedback and allow them to do certain things dependent on how uh, or whether or not fields and the form is valid okay so if you have any questions whatsoever feel free to leave a comment down below otherwise guys don't forget to share subscribe and all that jazz and i'll see you in the very next tutorial